Welcome everyone to today's uh, session of the NTI Pod Talk. This is a platform where we have conversations with students, grads, uh, staff members, other people in the community um, to give you an idea of what we're doing here at NTI. So today I am interviewing one of our instructors, Dr. Sarah Cook, and uh, she is, um, She's been an instructor with NTI for a long time and uh, is, is one of our favorite instructors. So I'm so happy that Sarah is here. So thanks for being here. Hi, thank you. Yeah, so uh, just I just wanna jump in. Um, if you can uh, you know, tell us a little bit about your background, um, your education, and kind of where, where, where you've been. <laughs> Sure. So I come from a background in naturopathic medicine. Um, I'm a graduate of Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. And I did have a clinical practice for a few years, but not for long. I think I pretty much knew right away that I wasn't really cut out for uh, patient care. And I wanted to do something a little bit different with my degree. And um, Part of that has been teaching. I actually got connected with NTI really early in my career, um, but I closed my practice in 2008. And since that time, I have built up a uh, business as a medical writer uh, for the naturopathic integrative medicine community. Uh, so really kind of, I mean, my training since then has really shifted towards just this laundry list of certifications in biomedical writing and direct response copywriting and digital marketing. And so it has kind of shifted, you know, then I apply those really the writing and the marketing um, strategies to the world of nutrition, naturopathic, integrative medicine. Mm -hmm. Well, and that that's what makes you such a fabulous instructor for the courses that you teach research and communications and independent study because you have that writing background and um, and you, you teach our students the, the really important nuggets that they need to have uh, to be good researchers. So that's that's fabulous. Um, uh, so what drew you to NTI? You said you got connected with NTI really on like what drew you to NTI and then what makes you want to stay here? And, and, and we are pleased you're <laughs> staying here. Uh, but so what makes, what about NTI makes you want to stay here? Yeah, well, it's funny. I mean, I think NTI found me. This was, I mean, this was, I think, 2006. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, Shar was the founder, the owner, the instructor. She was everything at that time. And I believe if I, I was either the very first instructor for her to bring on or one of the very earliest um, right. to teach any classes other than the classes she was teaching. And so um, it's actually, you know, one of, I remember my first meeting with her and one of the things about um, even NTI at that time was that she said, I really want someone who will collaborate with us and, you know, work to improve the curriculum and help with really, you know, kind of making sure the content is top notch. And I think that was something that did appeal to me that was like, okay, I'm not just going to be told exactly what to do, you know, and have to play it out, but be a part of making it better. And I feel like that that theme has continued and probably has kept me at this school because really most recently, you know, I teach the research and communications class and the independent study class and both of those I've been very much a part and involved in really creating what content is in them and you know that's what so that those courses are what I really believe is going to be most helpful for the students and it's what keeps me excited about teaching them because I am invested in you know I was invested in creating the, the content and I'm invested in uh, making it work for the students. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I would say from the time I started teaching at NTI until now, like that's probably been the theme that has kept me is really kind of being a part of it and feeling like I'm appreciated for helping to make it better. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Um, 
so I, if, if you wouldn't mind talking about um, your medical writing, which is, you know, your main uh, professional focus outside of teaching at NTI, um, a lot of times we have students who, who are prospective students or even current students who, you know, are passionate about the subject, but they're like, what, what can I do with my career afterwards? And one of the things that they don't really think about is writing. So yeah. can you talk about like your passion for writing and why you chose that and kind of how you, how you do that? I would say there is such a demand and such a need that any student who wants to get into writing, like I, I will help them. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, I mean, the types of writing I have done has morphed over time. And at first it was a lot of uh, things like blogs and articles that are very science-based, really like about the nutrition and about natural therapies. Um, writing like articles for journals or for continuing education um, or yeah definitely blogs like there is an entire opportunity to ghost write blogs for other practitioners or functional medicine doctors or naturopathic doctors because content is so needed um, just for businesses in general now um, mm -hmm. with the internet and digital marketing and so um, there's a huge demand literally just for blog writers um, and then the the health and nutrition area is also very huge for that um, and so that I think is one of the easiest places to get started in writing in the field of nutrition is mm -hmm. as a blog writer getting paid to write blogs and a lot of that like I said it, it's ghost writing so that means somebody else's name goes on it um, mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's a nice transition into the writing and that's kind of how I got into it. Um, but there's a lot of other opportunities. My, I have kind of shifted more into writing that is more sales related. And so writing website content, uh, writing email campaigns. And so there's a, definitely a demand in that area too, where it's, you know, kind of the blogs are really like content informational type of writing and then you can get into more of like the sales type of writing where we call that copywriting as well i mean there really is a range of opportunities um just you know depending on your interests and you just getting the right building up the right skills to do it but um i think having the training you know if if there's students at nti they have this amazing education in nutrition bringing that into the writing there is a demand because i mean that is what i have always experienced that one of the biggest reasons that my clients love to hire me is because they don't have to teach me that nutrition and naturopathic medicine part it's right. like oh good you know that we don't have to worry about that right um and the students graduating from nti have that as well so yeah. it's a huge uh, benefit yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, that, that is so inspiring because, um, uh, you know, students want to know that, that they can fulfill their passion to learn about nutrition and maybe they don't want to have a one-on-one -on -one client based practice, you know, kind of similar to you. They don't want to go the clinical route and working with people one-on-one -on -one daily, but writing is a great way to be able to use their knowledge and be able to share it with, you know, with the world at that point, once you're doing what blogs and websites and stuff. So yes. yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Good. Well, thank you. Um, so shift gears a little bit here. Uh, so, you know, you obviously um, know about nutrition, follow a nutrition based lifestyle. So what, what kind of um, foods or supplements are your favorite? Things that you try to include in your diet on a daily basis? Sure. So um, things I include in my diet on a daily basis, that's not that interesting. <laughs> I mean, that's like <laughs> walnuts and avocados and yogurt. I mean, some favorite stuff. So like we're, we're recording this mid January. I have a fifth grader and a third grader. So it's germ time. So my favorite uh, kind of supplement is the elderberry concentrate nowadays, which I just pour into my water. Yeah. 
and drink it all day. Yeah. Um, it's awesome for supporting the immune response. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's one. But you know, I mean, as far as my daily vitamins, I pretty much do the basics of multivitamin, probiotic, fish oil, and occasionally throw in some other things. So yeah. just kind of keeping it simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're using those things uh, as they're intended to supplement an otherwise, you know, whole food, <laughs> comprehensive diet. So Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any kind of particular meal planning schedule? Like do, do you intermittent fast or are you like a 8 a.m. noon, five o'clock person? Yeah, I actually don't do anything that's really too challenging or hard, like intermittent fasting or fasting at all. Um, <laughs> I actually, well, working from home allows me to be pretty lazy in my meal planning because I just go to the kitchen and chop up vegetables and grab what I want to eat. <laughs> also, I stop my day early and I'm usually in the kitchen by 4.30 in the afternoon transitioning to the evening, chopping the vegetables. And it's, I mean, I'm much, I'm very much just more spontaneous. Like as long as I have enough fresh food around and available, I'll just figure it out in the moment. But it, it's because of kind of the, the the um pattern of my day like i'm able to do that um you know i don't have to pack my lunch to bring it to the office right. i don't come rushing in the door at 6 30 and have to have something in the crock pot so <laughs> it's a little bit it is more spontaneous it's a little bit more relaxed but it's also not probably as planned yeah because i don't have to be yeah well <laughs> you're right that is that is one nice thing about working from home um do you find that you have to make certain adjustments um, for your kids? Like, do you pack lunches for your kids? So they now pack them themselves. After oh, dinner. there you go. Right? That's the right way to do it. <laughs> and only this year has this finally happened. But you know, it's like I just try and give them the framework of like, you have to have a fruit, a vegetable, a protein, and a carb. So it's like, and then that's how they think of it. So then they have the different containers and they put them, they, so I am so happy to sit here and say this because I never <laughs> thought the day would come. <laughs> but yeah. again, it's about having the food available like that. You know, I do, I always do the grocery shopping on Sunday, make sure, you know, that the food is available so that then we can have this kind of routine every day. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is certainly important being prepared. Um, so what about, uh, you know, you, you, you clearly, uh, you know, that we're always learning, right? We always have to learn new things and, and investigate new things. So do you have any kind of favorite websites or resources or podcasts, people that you follow? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, one of the, well, a journal I really recommend is the Natural Medicine Journal. That's, uh, I mean, I've worked closely with them on a lot of different writing projects and things, but that it's really high quality. A lot of their articles are written by NDs, and it's uh, it's just a free subscription that they send out, uh, kind of an electronic journal once a month, um, and it's really it's really practical and current um, research summaries and, and clinical clinically relevant stuff. So. Um, Natural Medicine Journal, um, I think is great. And, um, you know, I mean, it's funny because kind of like what I started to say at the beginning, personally, the, the podcasts and things that I follow nowadays are more the marketing and, and writing type of stuff. And so it's like, <laughs> building a story brand by Donald Miller. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I don't know, I, I probably am not the best one to ask for the top, you know, nutrition podcasts because I'm a little bit listening to the more of the marketing type of stuff nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, but the natural medicine journal, that that's a good resource. It really is a great resource. Yeah. Um, so do you have any tips for, for budding new nutritionists to kind of, you know, 
like give them give them words of wisdom about um what they can expect or or you know just like <laughs> well i mean my whole stint in the classes i teach at nti is you got to be able to communicate uh you know yeah. so it's like i mean they're coming out completely armed with the nutrition knowledge that they need. But if they're at all confused about how to explain to people what they do or how they can help, nobody's going to get it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really, and, and, and so a huge part of what I am trying to get my students to be able to do is clearly communicate, um, you know, uh, what they do, how, you know, it, validating what they do with research and um and and also just making it very practical like that's also why we're doing independent study we have we have students write something that's actually practical that they could put out into the world like the day that they submit it to me as an assignment it should be good enough that they could post it on a blog or send it out as an ebook or launch a webinar and it's like they're making something really a, a piece of communication that's really practical related to nutrition that they could use in their business. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think like that, that's, that's my contribution to NTI is like helping the students kind of translate just that knowledge about nutrition to how to communicate it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And it's, it's totally needed because, um, because you're right. Like they have something tangible that they can actually start um, selling and marketing and um, right the day they graduate or the day they turn it in and yeah. it, it's it's the um, springboard for them to start figuring out how to do other things uh, but they have that one thing that they've done that they can kind of rest on knowing that it's quality work and you know based on your input it's it's, it's finalized, it's done, it's polished. And um, yeah, yeah, that's important. Um, so do you have any uh, tips for self-care for, for students and, and others who are stressed? You know, well, you mentioned that this is flu season, so you're helping yourself, your immune system, but what about other sort of self-care tips, particularly for stress and being overwhelmed? Exercise. <laughs> That's what I do. To me, it's like getting outside, running in the field. Like, I think everyone just has to find what, what helps them relieve stress. You know, like to me, I've never been a meditator, so I can't, you know, I'm not going to tell everybody to meditate like that. It's just, you have to find what makes you feel better. And, you know, as far as like the overwhelm to me, I think it's, it's, it's having systems and organization. I think to me, I've always kind of wanted to have lists and have things written down and know that, know that everything's organized and taken care of. And nowadays we have all these digital kinds of apps we can use or whatever, but like um, I use Todoist as my kind of organize what I have to do. And honestly, when I started using that, it was sort of like this relief from the overwhelm because it was like, I know everything I have to do is in this list it's like the date of when i have to do it, it's there it's gonna alert me when i have to do it and it, and when i've done the task for the day it shows me a little happy icon of someone riding a bike and says enjoy your day and i feel like that's how it should be it's like everything's organized we know we're gonna accomplish what we have to accomplish and then go about your day so i mean i think everyone has to find what works for them but to me it's like having systems being organized and exercising outside <laughs> yeah. yeah and and I think that's really key because you know um, I always talk about to students when we're working with clients and clients have stress as a component of whatever health condition you know they're trying to work on um, you can't tell someone who's stressed because they're working you know multiple jobs or have lots of um, responsibilities you can't tell them to add one more thing in today into the day you know go take a yoga class or you know go just you can't tell them to add one more thing into their day because that's just going to add more to their stress so you do need to find out what will work for them for some people it may be sitting down in front of the tv 
and watching a good TV show or a comedy that makes them laugh, you yeah. know, or reading a good book or knitting or, you know, whatever. So you're, you're right. It does have to be personalized. Um, and it shouldn't be something that adds stress to their already stressed life to know that that's what they're supposed to, you know, to think that that's what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So I'm reading a book right now, Atomic Habits, which, you know, really for anybody and nutritionists who are trying to help people to take on more healthy habits, this book is amazing. But to your point <laughs> that we don't want to just add stress by telling them to do extra things, like one of kind of one of the recommendations of like, how do you start a new healthy habit is to make it easy and so easy that it's almost like you just can't not do it. So you start at even just saying, every morning I'm going to put on my walking shoes and go out the front door and stand on the porch. Like, and that's it. Like, that's all you're gonna do. Right. And then once you do that for a whole week, then you realize like, well, I'm out here. I might as well walk around the block. And right. so it's like getting people even just to do the tiniest thing moving in the right direction and make that a habit. And then you progress and move, you know, make it bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good advice. The name of the book again is what? Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits. I, I mean, oh my God, really. For anyone, anyone trying to improve their own habits or anyone trying to get other people to improve their habits, yeah. it's gold. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna get that book. Yeah. And, then, and then I want you to tell me again the name of the uh, task master you use. To do is. T O D O I S T. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, so yeah, I I I am still a paper and pen person. So <laughs> I do a I do a to do. Oh, I do paper. keep my calendar. Like my calendar is bigger than me. Oh, good. So I definitely write things on paper, but as far as you know, just like the laundry list of items to take care of, that's in to do list. Yeah. Well. <laughs> And getting getting the notifications and getting the little signals, you know, self validation, <laughs> actually helpful because you don't get that from a piece of paper. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Well, thank you so much. This has been such a, a enjoyable conversation. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, you too. Your time, and I appreciate your commitment and everything you do for NTI and for our students. So. Thanks. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Talk okay. to you later. All right, bye. Bye.